أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد بيض بركة سيد الشيخ سيد محمد فوزي الكركري قدس الله سره Notes from Mudhakara of October 2nd, 2023. Before starting this video, I would like to state that this work would never have seen the light without Sini Shaykh. If something is wrong, it will be from myself, and everything that is correct is from Sini Shaykh. The disciple asked Sini Shaykh, Qadda why in the prayer upon the Prophet وسلم, do we request, Allahumma salli. O oh Allah sent prayers upon the Prophet, and we do not pray directly on him. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Sidi Shaykh explained that asking Allah to pray on the Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, is due to our lack of knowledge of the Prophet's value, nearness, and rank in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sidi Shaykh referred to the verse 56 of Surah Al Ahzab, where Allah says, بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما Truly God and his angels invoke blessings upon the prophet All you who believe invoke blessings upon him and greetings of peace Allah سبحانه وتعالى committed himself to pray on the prophet صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم he prayed upon him before he created the creation and after the creation. He created the angels to pray on him as if it was a congregational prayer. Then Allah obliged the believers to pray upon him. This is the second part of the verse, O oh, you who believe invoke blessings upon him and greetings of peace. The prayer upon the Prophet وسلم, that the believers are commanded to are in fact Allah's prayers upon the Prophet. No one can fulfill his rights to be prayed upon as he, Allah, pleases. That's why when one wants to pray upon him, he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do so. Sidi Shaykh also mentioned that Allah's prayer upon the Prophet وسلم, has no beginning and no end, as its beginning is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and there was nothing but Allah. And he is now the way he always was. Therefore, his prayer also continues without end. Sidi Shaykh added that believers formulated various prayers based on the breezes of faith, nafahat, that they felt in their hearts. Some say, O oh Allah, send blessings upon the seal of prophets. While others say, O oh Allah, send blessings upon the handful of light. Or even, O oh Allah, send blessings upon the painted rose, word that would be hand, and so on. However, it's essential to begin with O oh Allah. This diversity in prayers upon the Prophet وسلم, is neither an innovation, bid'ah, nor forbidden, haram. Each person expresses his individual sense of faith and nearness in his prayers upon the Prophet. Sidi Shaykh then mentioned, that when the Prophet وسلم, was asked about the prayer he loves, he chose as salat al ibrahimiyya as mentioned in the Hadith. The writers, as salihin and the lovers then started to pray for him with as salat al ibrahimiyya using different formulas. For example, O oh Allah said prayers upon our Master Muhammad, the medicine of our hearts and its cure, and upon his family, just as, as you have sent prayers upon our master Ibrahim and his family, etc. It's as if as al al-Ibrahimiyya is the mother of all prayers, and the other prayers are like its fruits, gardens, and branches. On the other hand, the Prophet ﷺ forbade the shortened prayer, Salat al-Batra, on him, which means sending incomplete prayers upon the Prophet ﷺ, by ignoring his family, Ahlul Bayt. Sidi Shaykh explained that the prayer upon the Prophet and his family proves to the one who is praying that this prayer is continuous in time, connected and enduring. 
Sidi Shah explained that if one says, O oh Allah, send blessings upon the Prophet and his companions without mentioning his family, his prayer is shortened and incomplete, even if he mentions the companions. However, when he mentions the family of the Prophet Ahlul Bayt, it makes the prayer continuous and everlasting. On the other hand, including the companions, is to honor and bless them for what they did with the Prophet and they truly deserve this. If one does not come up with the prayer on the companions, he is not to be blamed, but he will not be rewarded. However, as for the family, Ahlul Bayt, if one misses them in the prayer, he is at fault. The same disciple then asked about the hadith of the Prophet I am leaving behind with you the two weighty things, الثقلين, the book of Allah and Al-Atra of Ahlul Bayt. Verily, neither shall separate from each other until they meet at the lake found, al hawd Sidi Shaykh explained that the saying of the Prophet, until they meet me at the lake found, is meant to emphasize the continuity of the prayer over time and how the reality of the Prophet is light, which extends beyond his bodily form. In reality, the prayer upon the Prophet is from Allah to Allah. The servant says, O oh Allah, send prayers upon the Prophet. Thus, this prayer has no end, and Allah is both the source and the destination. Sidi Shaykh added that if one is to consider the reality of the Prophet وسلم, which is light, the prayer on him is unlimited, it's worship, it's everything. Then Sidi Shaykh referred to verse 43 of Surah Al-Ahzab, هو الذي يصلي عليكم وملائكته ليخرجكم من الظلمات إلى النور. He it is who blesses you, as do his angels, that he may bring you out of darkness into light. If one carefully examines this verse, it becomes clear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his angels are praying upon his servants to bring them from darkness to light. It is as if for the one who has not seen the light, it was not his choice, but Allah has not prayed upon him. Sidi Shaykh highlighted that from this perspective, prayer isn't just a verbal act, it carries unique significance. The uniqueness, ikhtisas, is the divine light, and those who do not possess this light are not endowed with this unique quality. Allah has not conferred this distinction upon them. Thus, the real and connected prayer means connected to the Prophet وسلم, is light upon light, nur ala nur. Prayer is not what one may be thinking. In the same context, the disciple asked if the nations before Muslims were commanded to pray upon their prophets, peace and blessings upon them. For example, were the tribes of Israel, Bani Israel, commanded to pray upon Moses salam. Sidi Shaykh stated that Allah says, Truly God and his angels invoke blessings upon the Prophet, not upon the Prophets. As for the other nations, their prayers upon their Prophets is by following them in their words and actions and refraining from their prohibitions. However, the verbal prayer on which the Prophet وسلم, said, Whoever sends salah upon me once, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send salah upon him tenfold, represents an opportunity and a blessing for the nation, Ummah, of Al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Sidi Shaykh added that in previous nations, they used to pray two units of prayer in the morning and two units of prayer in the evening. It was called As-Salat al-Ibrahimayn. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam, during his night journey, Isra prayed in Al-Quds in the presence of prophets and messengers and performed a two-unit Ibrahimic prayer. This is what the prayer that used to be performed and the Prophet وسلم, used to pray it before the obligatory prayers were prescribed for him. So that was all for this video. Alhamdulillah, 
اللهم لك الحمد اللهم لك الحمد اللهم لك الحمد اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا ابراهيم وعلى ال سيدنا ابراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا ابراهيم وعلى ال سيدنا ابراهيم في العالمين انك حميد مجيد سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين